Good morning, YouTube. So it is currently February 21st, 3.44 in the morning. And I weighed in at an all-time low today of at 204.9. And today is a high-carb day, and today is also leg day. Time to get the day started with some pre-workout. <laughs> I never realize how tired I am in the morning until I have to film one of these videos and talk. Usually I don't talk to anybody. I wake up at 3 o'clock, 3.30 usually, and I typically do not talk to anybody until 8.30. So that gives me five hours before I even talk to people. But when I film, I gotta talk. Anyways, so I started my training this week. I started on Sunday. Actually, I started on Monday. Monday was my first training run that was geared towards my Spartan race that I'm doing. So if you didn't watch my previous video, I am signing up for a Spartan race in April 15th. It's gonna be in San Diego, California. Should be an easier sprint because there's no elevation, or there is, I mean, it's at like 100 elevation, I think. Um, the elevation climb, I don't even think there's any elevation climb. I think it's a pretty smooth race. So my goal for this race is to actually see how fast I could do the sprint. And then actually Cassie and I are planning on going to San Diego for the weekend after, since we're going to be there, and taking the little tuna to SeaWorld. So that'll be a lot of fun. Be a fun little family getaway weekend. But it's funny. So I started training on Monday, and all last week the weather was beautiful. And today, this is what happens in life when you set a goal. Life just wants to see how bad you want it. Yesterday morning when I went to work, first period it was all like sunny. And then second period when I got out, it was like freezing and super windy. And then one of the teachers told me, oh, we may not have school on Friday because um, it's supposed to snow. And I'm like, are you serious? And I looked and then today it is 31 degrees right now. It's windy. It's a severe weather. And then on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, it's supposed to rain. And it's supposed to be 30 degrees, so they're thinking it might snow. Now, I would not be against a snow day, so that'd be cool if that happened, but I'm not counting on it. But anyway, so my goal, my plan for 2023, these medals right back here, I have three of them. My goal is to get six of them this year. Now, what I, what I was telling you guys last week, and a couple of you guys wrote back saying that you guys want to hear all my goals. So here they are. April 15th, I will be doing a Spartan Sprint in San Diego, California. I believe it's May 20th, May 21st, I will be doing the Spartan Super in Big Bear, California. Now for those OGs who have been following this channel for a while, you know that I did the Big Bear one last year, but I only did the sprint. And it was a 5K, 9,000 elevation, and I wanna say there was 17, I'll have to check, 1,700 elevation gain in that three miles. It literally was a race like this. So if you wanna see the recap of that, I did a video of it. That was, I don't know if that was the hardest Spartan sprint or Spartan race I did. I think I definitely felt it the most during the race. It was a very ra tough race during. I didn't even actually like jog at all. It was pretty much walking, hiking up a hill. It sucked. But I'm always trying to, like I said in my last video, do something that I'm like, that's the hardest thing I've ever done and try to beat that every year. So my goal is to do the Spartan Super, which is going to be double what I did last year. So it's going to be six miles, 25 obstacles in Big Bear, California, elevation 9,000 feet. And I want to say this one has 3,000 elevation gain in the matter of six miles. So I've heard uh, horror stories about this race. I invited one of my buddies to do it, and he said Big Bear scares the mess out of him. So I'm going to do that May 20th, but or May 21st. But the cool thing is I just found out this past week, the day before that, I will be getting my master's degree officially at the ceremony that I've been waiting four years to walk across stage and have them say, Bryce Tory, master's of education, whatever they're gonna say. I don't even know what they're gonna say. I'm just going up there so that they can say it. I'm getting my diploma and I'm gonna be done with school forever. Never going back. 
unless I decide to go get my PhD and become Dr. Bryce. I don't know. That'd be a huge accomplishment. We'll see. Maybe another goal. I don't know. We'll think about it. But I'm pretty stoked about that because that's going to be a super fun weekend. I'm going to, on Saturday, walk across stage, get a huge milestone, a huge accomplishment, which I'm very excited for. And then the next morning, I'm going to go up to Big Bear and accomplish a mountain and run a 6K. So I'm excited for that too. That'll be a fun weekend. And then my Spartan Beast so that I can get the trifecta, that's going to take place in, I want to say, November 18th. So I'm going to have some months in between, but I'm going to fill them. I want to say it's November 18th, so it's two days before my daughter's birthday. And I think what we're going to do is, since I get that week off for Thanksgiving break, I know, as teachers, we get so many breaks, it's ridiculous. Um, I think my wife and I are going to drive out to Phoenix because it's in Phoenix, Arizona. So it's about five hours from where I live. Phoenix, Arizona, do the, like probably get a hotel next day, do the race, and then, I don't know, we might hang out in Phoenix, do something there, because I'll have the week off. But it will be Thanksgiving week, so excited for that. So technically I'll finish the Spartan Trifecta this year, right around my daughter's birthday. Now as, it, as for the months in between, because I got a race in April, a race in May, what I'm thinking about doing is I was looking into the deck of fit. And again, I haven't seen much online about the deck of fit. They're not as big as the... Um, Spartan races, but they do look just as fun. Now the deck of fit is more of almost like a, there's not obstacles, it's almost like a CrossFit slash fitness thing. So I'm looking into doing that. I may do one on May 6th. I'm gonna look into do it, do more research and then let you guys know. I'm for sure doing the Spartan races, but I'm like I said, I may do uh, a deck of fit. I think it's May, in May. So I may throw that in there and then I'll probably do another one in June and then another one in July. And then I'd have the, that trifecta because there's three medals, three different races. I think it's called the Deca Strong, Deca Fit, or Deca Strong, Deca Mile, and Deca Fit. They look a little bit easier than Spartan races, but they do look like a different challenge. So that's why I think I want to try those. But I'd finish that in July or August, and then it basically give me like two or three months to prepare um, for the half marathon beast in Phoenix, Arizona. So those are my goals for this year. Things I'm super excited for coming up. Um, I am excited to be back training and training for a race. I'm not excited for the weather. That sucks, but that's life. But to have an actual date for my my master's course, like I told you guys last year, I've been I the day I decided to go back to school, I was literally all I thought about was that feeling I was going to get walking across stage. And now I got the actual date, the actual time, the actual location. Uh, I'm going to buy tickets soon for my my mom and dad so that they could be there. Um, it will be cool to have, obviously, my daughter there. She's not going to really know um, probably what's going on, but it's just going to be cool at the end of the day. Um, and then it will definitely be cool to have my wife be there, considering she was, like, the main reason that I decided to get get smart and go back to school, you know, just to try and get the woman. So I'm excited. I'm super excited. So now that that is done, you guys are updated. Let's get into the video. And to be honest with you guys, I don't really know what this video is going to be about. I just wanted to film and keep you guys updated because I feel like there's a couple life events going on. And I'm really, really enjoying all the comments I'm getting back from you guys. It's it's a lot of fun interacting with you guys. Definitely funner than... Uh, I mean, I like interacting on Instagram. Some of you guys have reached out to Instagram. On Instagram. I'm having a lot of fun interacting with all you guys, whether it be on Instagram or YouTube. I appreciate all the comments on YouTube because obviously that helps the, the channel grow and everything. But also, you guys can reach out to me on Instagram. That's how a lot of you guys do DM me. Um, but I wanted to give you guys a video. Obviously, I try to give you guys a video once a week. But I do know I'm going to take you guys through a leg workout. And it's going to be a leg workout that basically sucks. I love legs. I used to hit legs twice a week. But when anytime I'm training for a Spartan race, I usually only do it once a week. Um, and the volume and like rep ranges kind of change because it's more like if you do a Spartan race, your legs burn. You don't really need super strong legs, like weight-wise. Um, and that's something, if you guys seen, I think I had a, even a couple comment where people comment, say, you don't lift that heavy weight. No, I do not. I absolutely do not. I, I don't lift heavy. Um, I check my ego at the door. I used to lift heavy back in the day. I used to love lifting super heavy, and now I don't. Um, I'm 32 years old. I don't see the point of lifting heavy. I know some people do, and I'm not you know, against that. But the reason why I don't lift heavy, I had a guy tell me one time in the gym one time, I think I was squat, trying to squat like 500 pounds. And even just saying that now, I'm like, what was I doing? I wasn't playing football at the time. It was after I stopped playing football. So it wasn't like I was trying to get stronger for football. That was the whole reason I started working out was to get stronger for football. 
I want to say I was like 22, 23. So my football career had ended by then. And I hit the 500, and then he comes walking up. I don't even know if it was 500. It might have been like four. It was four something. I don't think I ever hit 500. I deadlifted 500. I don't think I ever squatted 500. But anyway, I hit this heavy weight. He comes walking up to me, and he was like, you know, I'm going to tell you something, and you could tell me to kick rocks, and you could not listen to me. He was an older guy, and he was always in the gym, so I, I and I always respect my elders, regardless, even if they're a donkey head sometimes. And he tells me, you know, I there was a time where I was squatting 405 for reps and everything, and he's talking, and he's like, and I, I would do this weight all the time. It wasn't heavy for me, and then I went down, I was in my lowest position, and came up and just heard my back pop. And he said I was out, my back was never the same. Uh, I don't know if he ever had back surgery, but he said his dad told him one time when he was saying, lifting heavy, he was like, Dad, I, you know, I squatted, I think he said like 600 or something, this guy was a beast. He squatted like 600 pounds, and he told his dad that, and he's like, his dad told him, and he'll never forget, his dad was like, that's great, gas is still a dollar fifteen, and a burger is like, two bucks or something he gave him something i wish gas was that cheap that'd be nice he gave him something that basically meant like that's great but it doesn't change how the world is and when he said that it kind of made sense to me like so i squat say if i squat 400 pounds right now and that's a huge accomplishment if that's what you're shooting for you know don't don't take this the wrong way i'm just saying for someone my my age where i'm at in my life how many surgeries i've already had how many injuries i've already had um, from ego lifting or doing stuff like that. Right now, I just want to look good, feel good, and move good at the end of the day. I mean, it's all about longevity for me. Um, so when you see these videos, you don't see me lifting heavy. I don't bench press that much. I don't squat that much. I very rarely deadlift just because of all the back injuries I've had. And that's just where I'm at. So again, when it comes to training for a race, I'm not going to be lifting heavy, but I do have a lot of volume for this leg workout. So that being said, I'll probably just take you through a full day maybe just take you through a leg workout i don't know stay tuned and you'll find out but i'm gonna finish my pre-workout get my stretching in read my bible and then meet you guys in the garage aka a gobi now this might be actually similar to a leg day video you guys have seen in the past because obviously since i'm in a garage gym i have limited equipment but at the same time any workout i do i usually choose five exercises I try to have one of them be like a main movement. For instance, if it's chest day, I'll do bench. If it's back day, I'll do rows, barbell rows. And legs, obviously the main movement for legs is gonna be uh, squats. So I like to warm up my legs first, however though. So my first exercise I'm gonna do to warm up the legs and get a lot of blood pumping to my legs, I'm gonna do leg extensions. I'm gonna do four sets of 25. I'm gonna be concentrating on the actual like squeeze and just getting all the blood pumping to my quads. I'm only going to have a minute rest in between. Uh, second exercise, I'm going to do leg curls again to warm up the the warm up the hammies and get a lot of blood pumping there. I'm going to do the same thing, four sets of 25. I'm going to do a minute rest in between uh, and keep the same weight. Once I'm done with that and I have a lot of blood pumping to my leg, they're all warmed up. Then I'm going to jump into my actual squats. So for squats, I go 15, 12, 12, 12, 15. So I go five sets on squats. And again, the rep range is a lot, the reps are a lot higher. The reason why is because I want a lot of volume because when I did my last Spartan race, which was a beast, my legs were super fatigued. And for that one, I trained a lot of like 10 to 12 reps. So I'm trying to increase the reps and volume. Now when I do the barbell squats, I'm going to take a minute and a half rest in between. So a little bit longer rest just because it is a bigger movement. That would be my third exercise. And then my fourth exercise, I'm going to go into Bulgarian split squats. You could either do dumbbells with these and hold them in your hand, or you can have a bar on the back. I'm going to do a bar on the back just because, again, it kind of engages my core, and I feel like it's a little bit more difficult. So for that, I'm only going to go reps of six. Now this one, I'm going to try to obviously go for like strength. So reps are going to be lower, but the weight's going to be a little bit higher. So three sets, minute and a half rest in between, and I'm going to keep the same weight. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna do, I think they're called Cossack squats or Cossack squats, Crossack squats, Cossack squats. I don't know what they're called, but they absolutely suck, but they do help with mobility and I feel like they're gonna prevent injury when it comes to actually running the race. So for that, I got four sets of eight. Again, a lighter weight. I'm really just focusing on getting the stretch and the mobility part. And then the last set, 
or the last exercise. This is the sixth exercise, but it is gonna be a superset, kind of like a burnout style. I'm gonna do three sets of 10 on each leg step ups with a dumbbell. And then as soon as I'm done with that, so say I do my left leg first, so I'm gonna go 10 reps, drop the weight. I'm gonna go 10 body weight reps, then pick back up the weight. I'm gonna do my right leg with 10 reps, drop the weight, and then 10 reps of body weight. So a lot of volume, it's like 60 reps per leg for that entire three sets. Once I'm done with that, I am done with the workout. So it's only six exercises. And then I'll jump into my core, which again for my core, I told you guys in my last video, I usually just choose three exercises. I'll do a circuit tr style training, like three rep, three sets. So I'm gonna do rollouts, three sets of 15. I'm gonna go rollouts for 15 reps. I'm gonna do Russian twist for 15 reps. I'm gonna do some type of cr uh, sit up. I'll figure it out when I get there. I'm gonna do 15 reps. I'm gonna wait a minute and then I'm gonna do it all again. And I only do that for three, three reps. Um, right now I'm hitting core about three times a week and I do that style training. It only takes about five, six minutes at the end of my workouts. Um, but at least I'm hitting my core to prevent any back injury that I may have. So anyways, I'm running a little late so I gotta jump straight into this workout because I cannot be late for work. So leg day is going down in a gogi in three, two, one, go. All right, leg day and core is done. Took an hour and seven minutes, burnt 515 calories, average heart rate 121. It is currently 6.07, so I'm running a little bit behind, but I still gotta get my cardio in. Luckily, on my leg days, it's just walking at an incline for 45 minutes, there's no running. However, I do gotta run tomorrow, and usually my body, the way it works, the day after leg day, and then the second day after leg day, or the third day, the day after that, my legs are even more sore. But I gotta run tomorrow and on Friday. So, main goal tonight when I get home from work, make sure I foam roll, make sure I use the massage gun, stretch, try to get all that lactic acid out, and hopefully be better to run tomorrow. But I'm gonna knock out this 45 minutes of cardio, and then I will catch up with you guys when I get to work, because there is something I wanna talk to you guys about that I think is gonna help you out when it comes to hitting your fitness goals. So stay tuned. 
All right, so it is officially noon, which is, is my lunch time. Today has been crazy. It has been freezing cold. It's like 30 degrees and it's supposed to snow on Friday, like I said, so that's fun. But I'm gonna eat my lunch, which my lunch today, I'm pretty excited for, because today is a high carb day. So I got two pieces of bread. Comes out to like 44 grams of carbs, I wanna say. And then I got some just I'm just finishing up my barbecue chicken mustard is clutch when it comes to seasoning which I'm running low on <clears throat> so I'm gonna eat this this eat this technically chicken breast sandwich for lunch again this is my high carb day so on my low carb days, I'm usually sitting at about 80 grams of carbs. On my high carb days, they go up to about, I think, 260 grams of carbs. What I've noticed about carbs, and this is what you notice, you start to learn the more you meal prep and the more you start understanding how your body works. When I have carbs, and this might sound weird, I feel tired all day. I have like no energy. When I run more off of fat, I feel like there's no like crash or anything. It's just very smooth energy, which I read a book called I think Primal Fitness, which talks about you, the benefits of using fat as like a fuel source. Regardless, I'm not gonna get into the science. I'm gonna eat this sandwich though, which I'm pretty excited about. But I wanted to talk to you guys about a discussion that I had with my students earlier today. <clears throat> and this goes out to all the students out there and then even all the adults out there. I was talking to them about how nowadays it is so easy for people to stand out and not technically fall into the average category just by doing the simplest things like back in the day you had to do you might have to be an extreme like athlete perform a certain way or be really smart or you know perform really well on the SAT scores or whatnot and nowadays I was telling them guys when you get a job interview say you want to become a nurse I'm thinking of my wife right now that's why Say you want to be a nurse and you get your degree. Well, as soon as you get that interview, everybody in there has that, that piece of paper, that degree. The only thing that separates you is whether you get hired or not is on how much they like you. And nowadays, it is so easy to stand out as a like and have people like you just by being nice and courteous. I tell my students all the, all, all the time, you should greet everybody that you come in contact with, teachers, students, you should smile, you should shake their hand, you should ask them how their day is going. It is so easy to stand out. When I have conversations with people, you can connect with people on such a different level just by asking them, hey, what's up? Hey, how you been? What's new? Or like, for instance, if you notice someone gets a, a, a haircut, I always compliment people when I see they, whether it be a female or male, I'll say, hey, did you get a haircut? I read this book one time that was called How to Win Friends and Influence People, which I, is a great book, Dale Carnegie. And it talks about these simple things that people used to do all the time back in the day, day that people just don't do it anymore. Like hold the door open for someone, smile at someone, ask someone how their day is going, follow up on them, wish them a happy birthday. like. I have all my students' birthdays written down on my calendar, and you should see their face when like, they walk into my class and I tell them like, hey, your birthday's in three days, are you gonna do anything? Like they look at me like, one, I'm super like a weirdo for knowing that, but at the same time, it's like you could tell they appreciate that, and that's not, that goes for, for teenagers, that goes for adults, that goes for anybody. Like showing people that you care about them and being nice to them goes such a long way. And I got that from my mama, because my mom would always tell me, she used to always say, and I love her for saying this, Bryce, you gotta be nice to everybody because you never know when it might come back that you need them or they could help you with something. And I remember her telling me that, like, be nice to all your teachers. And I would tell her, like, like you really think I wanna be a teacher? Like, if someone would've told me 20 years ago that, hey, you're gonna come back to the school you graduated from and teach, I would've looked at them like, you are crazy. There's no way I wanna be a teacher. But you never know. But the point of the story is I was very nice to all my teachers because I thought about what my mom said. And when it came to getting the job, I didn't even actually have to interview. The principal just called and said, hey, did Tori put a couple of you guys references? Like, would you recommend them? And luckily they had nice things to say about me because I always tried to be nice to them. So 
if you are nice to people in today's society, you have a, a leg up on everybody else. You could stand out, people will like you, people will wanna work with you, people will wanna help you. So I was talking to my students about it, like telling them, guys, greet everybody that you see with a smile, ask how their day's going, check in with them, and just be respectful, you know? It's something that unfortunately, like I have one student that stands out to me, this dude refers to me, yes sir, no sir, all the time. You say that nowadays, like you instantly stand out. And again, I live in California, so it might be, you might, people might be watching this, like that's how it is here, that's how it is here, what, like wherever you are. But in California, I'll tell you what, if you wanna stand out, just be nice to people. Because there's not a lot of nice people out there. Anyways, that's my rant for the day, my DBA message. Average person will not be nice. Average person will not ask you how you're doing. Average person will not check in with you. And you already know my, my message. Don't be average and eat your sandwich. All right, so school is officially done for the day. And I got my last meal that I'm gonna eat here, which is my favorite meal, my protein sludge. But there's a twist today since it's high carb day and I love cereal. I don't know anybody who does not love cereal. I factored in that I could put in Honey Nut Cheerios. It's like the peanut butter chocolate kind or whatever. So I put this on top of my chocolate marshmallow Greek yogurt and it's absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna eat that and I'm gonna head home and spend some time with my tuna, my little tuna and my wife. But before that, I wanted to leave you guys with obviously the main point of what I wanted to talk to you guys about, which I was thinking about that started this week. Let me show you guys what this looks like real quick. Now look at this. Delicious. I'll tell you what I call like flexible dieting. You find ways to incorporate things that you like to keep you sane. So I have three days like this where I could eat kind of fun things that keep me sane and then the other four days I'm pretty strict. But anyway, what I wanted to talk to you guys about Mmm. Okay. Protein carbs, good combo. So, if I was to give any advice to someone who is just starting out and starting to work out, my piece of advice to you would be stop working out. There is a huge difference between working out and training. I started training this week. For the past two months, I have been working out with the intent to look a certain way and feel a certain way. And what I've known is when people only go to the gym to work out because they want to look a certain way and feel a certain way, eventually they'll stop. And the reason why is if they're trying to look a certain way when they go to the gym one day and they don't look that way and they go to the gym another day, a couple weeks goes by, they still aren't looking the way they want to, they, the, the scale hasn't changed, their weight hasn't dropped, they stopped. So I encourage you to train. I started training this week and I have felt uh, a, a passion, a drive, a motivation. I have more intent when it comes to my training. I'm not just working out so I can feel good or look a certain way. Yes, I'm training. I'm training for a race. I have to perform well at this race. Yes, I wanna look a certain way and I wanna feel a certain way, but at the end of the day, if I don't train when it comes race day, it's gonna be very painful. So to eliminate that pain, I have to train. Now, when I train one day, I'm not, I don't care if I don't look the certain way after that training session because I realize I have to perform a certain way 12 weeks from now. So it keeps you like focused long-term. And then what ends up happening is at the end of that training, you have developed the, the strategies and the habits that will help you lose weight and look a certain way when you're into that working out phase. Now, I'm not saying there's not a a time and place for working out. Obviously, I've, I've, I've gone through phases where all I'm doing is working out and I'm not training for anything. But if you feel like you're in a rut and you feel like you don't have any motivation to work out, I would challenge you to train. Sign up for something. Sign up for a 5K, sign up for a mud run, sign up for a Spartan race, an Ironman, uh, ultra marathon. I mean, it doesn't even have to be something crazy. Just sign up for something and, and stop working out and start training for it. As soon as you start training, you'll start seeing results. The problem is, is the average person will just start working out to look a certain way and feel a certain way, and that's why the average person doesn't stick with this lifestyle for a very long time. But you already know my motto, don't be average, now start training and stop working out. But that's about it for this video, guys. That wraps it up. It was kind of like a mix between a leg day slash a day in the life kind of thing, I guess, since I took you to work with me. I am enjoying 
the process of putting out this content for you guys. So if you guys want to see a certain video, please comment below. If you haven't already, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel because I will be documenting my entire journey for the next six months, nine months, whatever it is, in order to complete another Spartan trifecta and then complete a DECA trifecta, get my master's degree and accomplish a lot of goals for 2023. So go out there, embrace the suck, do something that when you finish it, you say that was the hardest thing I've ever done this year and just try to get better. And you guys already know the motto. Stay happy, stay healthy, and above all, don't be average. Now go eat your Cheerios, protein, sludge, and have a great day.